Well, thank you all very much for being here. For those of you who are family members or uh, friends, neighbors, guests, um, and don't know me, my name is Amanda. Um, my last name is Yates. Um, you might not be able to tell that by looking at it um, when it's printed. Um, I serve as the Minister of Partnership and Mission here at Holy Cross and also as the Youth Ministry Administrator. And um, we have been in a time of transition and um, we had a youth director a year and a half ago who took a new job. And then um, we are very excited because we have been in this call process um, for a while now and in two weeks, but three weeks. Um, beginning of April, we have a husband and wife pastor team, Pastor Sarah and Pastor Drew, who will be joining us, um, and they will be working primarily with our um, youth and our families um, and our confirmation program. So as our weeks here for Lent and Wednesdays continue, you will see them. It's a great opportunity for them to sort of meet everybody when we're doing um, roaming around and greeting all of our mentors and mentees. So I just really wanted to thank you for being a part of this important um, ministry that we have here at Holy Cross. Pastor, do you want to introduce yourself? Pastor. <laughs> 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 I'm Pastor Meredith. It's lovely to have you here. And uh, if you're coming to Ash Wednesday at 7 o'clock, I have storage here. Okay. All right. <laughs> if, you at, if you were at 6, you already heard it. Um, leave me a little little intrigue for a seven o'clock worship this evening. So we are just really glad that you um, um, have said yes to being a mentor um, in in this season of Lent um, and reflection. It's a great um, opportunity you have to get to know um, the neighbor or young person um, who is either a family member. Or maybe a friend or somebody from church and so your commitment to spend this time with them is really important um, and we thank you for that um, at Holy Cross um, we believe um, that students um, grab a hold of their faith and this is something that is uh, shared with us by the Fuller Institute as well as Vibrant Faith Ministries by having caring um, connected, faith-filled adults in their lives, at least five. So you help to serve as that one of those people in the lives of our seventh and eighth graders. And um, our, our confirmation program has small groups and small group leaders, but this is also a wonderful opportunity where they actually have one-on-one -on -one faith-filled conversations with another adult in their lives. So thank you for saying yes to that. Um, we believe that this program really helps in their faith development. Um, that one-on-one -on -one time is essential. You serve as an example um, in modeling faith in, faith in many ways. It's just by being present in their lives and caring about what is going on in their life. So, how this program works. We are asking that you spend five Wednesdays or five sessions with the students for about should take about 30 minutes. I know some students are more talkative than others, um, but this Lenten Mentor book will serve as your guide. This is a, um, a resource that we have used in the past. If you did our Lenten Mentor program not last year, but the year before, this is um, the same as that. We have really liked this conversation-based, open-ended question um, ministry guide. Um, and we feel that it is, well, it's open-ended questions, first of all, because sometimes students like to reply in yes or no fashion. But um, we hope that you guys will be able to dig in and um, be open to conversation. So primarily, um, you, we encourage you to meet on Wednesday evenings, um, and you can meet before or after either service. We have worship at 5 and at 7 p.m. Um, we encourage you to meet here and meet from the Nativity Center, the, the Nativity Displays this way. I, if you're familiar with Holy Cross, 
you might be going, where, where did all these tables come from? We started to add some more conversation space, spaces today so that there's a few more places for you to go. You can meet in here, the chapel, um, there's spaces by the nativity centers. We put some extra chairs and stuff out there. Um, so there's a variety of places to go. I also understand that sometimes Wednesday just doesn't work. So another option is to meet on Sundays um, and work that out between um, the student and the parent, engage the parent in that conversation, and figure out what, what works best. Um, we just really ask you to be authentic, available, and affirming with that. We call these um, the AAA being a AAA adult. And so be, be present. Not only show up, but show up in, in your listening. Because um, that is really essential um, for this. Be present in the moment with them. If you need to um, have them and you take your cell phone, put it on silent, which mine was not, and put it face down on the table, go ahead and do that. Give yourselves that. We're going to spend 30 minutes together, and we're going to be truly present with each other. And listen. Um, sometimes you got to pull a little bit of the conversation out of students. Some students are talkative. Some are not as talkative. Um, but allow them those moments to talk. So as the 30 minutes go by, they should be talking more than you are talking. It's an opportunity to share between the two, but hopefully, and this may grow as the, as the sessions go, that they will be a little bit more talkative and open. Be open with them about the, the topic of the night. Share a little bit about yourself. There are conversations about trust and things that bring you joy. So don't just ask them all of the questions, but respond as well. So that um, this sort of builds that trust in that relationship. And then, you know, pray with them. Start, start with prayer, end with prayer. Um, you can also start with uh, highs and lows. Anybody familiar with highs and lows? No? We do highs and lows uh, in, uh, in small group on student ministry night on Wednesday nights. And ask the student to share a high from their week and a low from their week. And share a high from your week and a low from your week. Um, and maybe those highs and lows are what um, your prayers are at the end of your time together. Okay? Any questions so far? Huh? All right, let's get to this booklet here. So, you will see that there's a meeting log. You don't have to turn it into me, but it is a good way for you to keep track of when you met. Okay, so one more thing for me to record. It's not going to happen. Um, if you are still working to get to know your mentee. This is, um, whether it's a neighbor or family friend, these are some great open-ended questions on the next page for get to know you ideas as well. And you do not have to do that. There are seven topics this year, and you have five sessions. So, you can pick every week, ask the student which one you wanna talk about tonight. It's also possible that um, if you're done in 15 minutes, say, all right, which one do you want to talk about next? Because you have a couple extra. Um, so we allowed you that flexibility, not only to pick, um, but you don't have to get through all seven. Okay? Um, and they, as it says, you, they don't have to be in any particular order. One thing I want to draw your attention to before we get to the lessons is in the very back, there is a covenant for you guys to read through. And then I would suggest that you read through that together 
and um, and sign it and commit to that in your time together. So on the back of the, there's two pages in the back. On the front half has a little bit more information, and on the back it says the mentor, the youth, the youth, and the mentor. So um, especially for our seventh grade students, this is a new experience for them. So they're like, I'm not exactly sure how this works. I filled out the paperwork, Amanda. I picked somebody. Um, so walking them through this and having this discussion together is probably really helpful. Um, it talks about expectations and how you're going to journey through these next five weeks together. All right, let's get into these lessons here. I'm not going to go through them, um, but you will see each lesson has, like, so let's go to joy, which is devotion number two. Each one has um, a scripture verse, and we have it in most, um, I think everyone, actually. They have the NRSV version and the message version of that scripture verse. So take a look at that. Maybe take a look at the verse ahead of time. Um, figure out if you want to share that to guide your discussion at the beginning. Or maybe, as I was looking through them, I thought that it might be great to do sort of deep, deeper, read the scripture verse together, reflect on that, and then do deepest. Um, that's just what I noticed when I was working through it, because I kind of felt like maybe the, the scripture guided the deepest conversation just a little bit. Um, like I said, they are open-ended questions. It's easy to start with a food that delights me, um, or I am easily amused by, and then deeper questions like what a person needs to be happy, content, Fulfilled, joyful. How are those different? What if, what does a person mean for those things? So, um, like I said, these are open-ended questions for discussion between you and your mentee. So we have joy, we have trust, we have sorrow. Um, and by letting the students pick, you let them be open. To, to that discussion or not. Some students have um, gone through deep sorrow in their lives, even as seventh and eighth graders. Um, and that may be something that they want to share and talk about, and it may be something that they're not ready to talk about. Um, God's story, spirituality, and cheers and cheers. So the highs and the lows. Sometimes. There's also a spot in here for notes. If you want to take any notes about um, which you and your student talked about, or something maybe that they brought up that you want to talk about again, the next week as well. Any questions about the devotion booklet itself? We, um, anybody familiar with this version of the... <coughs> Yep, a couple of you from two years ago. Anybody uh, a repeat mentor from last year? Yeah? Okay. Whoa, look at you. Awesome. Um, I think that this, in a lot of ways, is an easier discussion than even last year's um, devotional guide. So we really moved from... Um, last year was a little bit about faith stories, and that was great. And in years past, we talked about um, Lutheran history and tenets of the Lutheran faith, but we really just want students to be in conversation about life and faith and their joys and their struggles with another important person in their lives. Um, and as I said before, this is um, a great opportunity for you to walk with them, um, not only on their confirmation journey, but on their faith journey as well. So by being present, by saying that these conversations are important, you help to model um, faith for them by putting that, helping them to see that as a priority in their lives. And it's also okay to talk about um, stuff that is joyful and do that. <coughs> also know that we're having faith conversations with students. We don't expect you to have all the answers. Um, 
I don't have all the answers. The pastor doesn't have all the answers. Sometimes you can just say, man, that's a good question. I don't know. Maybe we can ask the one, or we could ask Pastor Meredith, we could ask Amanda, we could ask Pastor Drew, we can ask Pastor Sarah. Let me write this down, and let's think about this more next week. Um, so sometimes, I know even when I have faith conversations with students, they wow me with their questions, and I'm like, that is a really good one. Um, and sometimes it's really hard because we want to be able to give a clear answer, and we don't have one. And I know that many of you come from different faith backgrounds, and that's okay. Um, you don't have to be Lutheran um, to be on this journey with a student. We encourage you to worship with them on Wednesday nights. It doesn't always work. Um, but being here and being present on Wednesdays, not only for that 30 minutes, um, but for worship with them too, helps them to see that that is important um, in their life. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work, like I said before, and you choose a Sunday where you get creative. Occasionally, I remember one of my first years, we had a student and he had his phone out, and I was like, what are you doing? Put your phone away. He was FaceTiming with his mentor because something came up and she couldn't make it. Um, so you can be creative sometimes. Um, being present is an important part of this. Um, pray with them. Talk with them. Um, let them know that they are important. Um, and those are the most, um, that is what we ask of you. That is what this Lenten mentor journey is really all about. Any questions about this process the next five weeks? No? I don't think... I want to put some names and faces together. I've been checking off who I think is here. Oh, okay. Is that all right? You are welcome to. Suzanne Skritzmeyer. Okay. I, you told me that. Angela Gill. Okay. You told me that too. Short memory. Uh, Cheryl Crawford. Cheryl Webster. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Holly West. Uh, Julie Rotier. Yeah. Heidi Kellenberger. Okay. A um, Ashton. Sorry. I think I guessed the rest of you. Sorry. <laughs> that was good to put Dombra, faces with names. And Dombra. Okay, I think that's everything. So, I, I'm i thinking about if you may not come to church, I'm going to tell my story. Can you turn that down? Oh, Jeff is like cutting it. Uh, I can cut, I can turn it no, off. No, I mean, he'll just cut me. He'll he, just cut that. So today, I'm at Children's Hospital. So if you went to 5 o'clock church, you heard this. So if I'm, I go to Children's Hospital, I got balloons for the kid I'm going to see, and I got, you know, bag, and I brought lunch for the mom, and all of this stuff, and so this guy comes in uh, to the elevator with me, and he goes, you got your ashes, you're going to heaven, and I said, that's the plan, <laughs> <laughs> and then he saw my collar, and my very diminutive cross that someone just gave me, and um, he says, oh, I am so sorry, <laughs> and I all the way to the ninth floor. <laughs> like, oh, could I sink through the floor? It was just, um, so, oh, and he, I almost felt like he wanted to say, oh, Father, I'm sorry, but <laughs> anyway, it was one of those Not priceless funny. moments, so it was great. So thank you um, on behalf of the kids and our ministry here. We are having guest preacher Jamie, uh, who is oh, yes. going to be She's a student at Luther Seminary. She's in her first year of seminary. Excellent preacher. She's been teaching the kids the last two months. And um, we're doing a, we're, we're trying to work on a graphic that was more approachable for the kids for this sermon series that would be meaningful to the adults as well as to the students. And so it's called The Road Signs of Lent. Tonight we're doing the U-turn. So, um, and... There's uh, going to be stop signs and yield signs and all how that connects to faith. So that's um, our I'm purpose. kind of excited for that connection. I'm waiting for my little 
preschool road signs to come in the mail. So <laughs> that I can use. Anyway, thank you. And oh, one of our students, when he wrote a space statement, talked about how this was very important time to him. Um, it happened to be a grandma, and he just wrote that this was such a special time with his grandmother and time to spend. So um, I think we underestimate that sometimes the lack of one-to-one -one kind of attentive conversation that we don't get much of these days, right? Um, so thank you for being part of that. And you indeed make a difference. And can I close? Are you done? I'll close. I have part. a couple of housekeeping okay. side questions. And then you can close. Does that work? So um, in case your mentee asks you these questions, during Lent, I mean, just a, a couple of tweaks to their uh, sermon notes. So students, as part of their confirmation um, program here at Holy Cross, are asked to attend worship and fill out a sermon note. Attend worship regularly. Fill out the sermon note 18 times, or the worship weekend worship note, 18 times during uh, the year. And they're like, ooh, 15 times. I'm like, when you add Wednesdays and Lent in every Sunday, it's like 60 times. You can do it. Um, but for new for this year, for Wednesdays, um, we have purple ones. Okay. And they are found um, on the wall over there in the plastic acrylic file folder, and then they just drop them in that mailbox there. Also, we are still tracking um, students' attendance on Wednesday nights, um, and so that is what those iPads are over there. They know exactly what to do, how to. Better than I But. If they're like, where's my name tag? Uh, we don't have name tags on Wednesday, they just have to check in with the iPad. So they may ask you that. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping. And really the note is pretty much the same, the worship notes and they say, I ask them what is the sign for the night, what's the road sign? Um, so hopefully that will help them when they're kind of answering those questions. Any questions? No? Less than 30 minutes. <laughs> right. The only way to do a meeting. Are or, they going to their own service tonight as they usually do on Wednesday night, or are they going to join us tonight? No, there is no student ministry night tonight. Okay. Yes. So, so they will there's always Ash Wednesday service at 7. Okay. But no student ministry. That's a great question. So yeah. there isn't student ministry night at 7. The expectation for students is that they worship with you and or their family at 5 or 7 um, in the sanctuary. Yeah. So that is our Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this holy season that helps us in um, grow in faith and to serve you. And uh, we are grateful that you are a God of grace, a God of second chances, a God who allows us to make U-turns. And we are thankful for these men and women who um, are going to share of themselves with our 7th and 8th graders during this uh Lenten time, and we just pray that you bless their conversations, that um, there could be a lot of questions, and like Amanda said, never all the answers, but uh, let them know that there's never any question that they can't ask. We pray in your name. Amen. And a lot, I'm, my list is getting ever longer of questions I have to ask God when I get to heaven, so um, that's why one of my responses is like, the list is growing. I'll add your <laughs>